Okay. <laughs> In the hour since I made that last 10 minute video on uh, adjusting our training to the current, let's call it virus quarantine situation, I've had some comments on the arrangement of my books and the fact that they're not necessarily in the proper author sequence. I've also had some comments regarding the fact that I seem to have lost my razor, uh, <laughs> but I'm embracing Scruffy, so I don't care. Uh, but I've also had a few questions, and one of them was, or a few of them are about this idea of incorporating a speed development or speed training block into this period we're in right now. Um, this, I am not an expert on sprinting. I'm not going to claim to be, but I have had PhD students or particularly one that's worked with sprinting. I've been involved with some uh, coaching years ago of sprinters and I have been a co-author on some publications. So I'm not complete newbie, but uh, I certainly respect the fact that some of you may say, well, you're getting out of your league here. Uh, but as an endurance athlete, runners, we, you know, a runner needs to be able to have a certain degree of speed reserve. Even if you're going to be a, a marathoner, your marathon goals, if we step back uh, and look at the speed that is required, then you have to have appropriate 5K, 10K speed. You have to have a speed reserve that makes that marathon pace manageable. So we have to work through the, through the speed range uh, in training. My daughter's an example of, of uh, an endurance athlete with a preponderance of slow twitch fibers. She is a natural long distance type person. Uh, I remember she could sit 90 degree wall sit for 30 minutes when she was a teenager. So she has natural endurance, but not natural explosiveness or speed in her legs. So can we do something about that? How much is it trainable? Well, she's never going to be an elite sprinter or even close, but our feeling is, is that we can do something. We can improve her speed reserve to an extent that it will make a difference for her in a uh, terrain race, you know, a cross country race in a 10,000 and a, even in a half marathon. And we think it actually has. And the, the problem is for most endurance athletes that when we do speed sessions, they end up looking a lot like interval sessions, typical interval sessions, because the, the variables you manipulate during interval training and the variables you manipulate during a speed session are basically the same, but your goals are really different. And so this has been hard for me to get across to my daughter. And I think probably she's not so uh, different from most endurance athletes or distance runners. So if you want to work on speed and you want to do a speed session, if, uh, I'm looking back here at this little chart I made or a little picture. I decided to not do PowerPoint right now. <laughs> Um, intensity and duration, your, the, the work bout is going to have a certain intensity and a certain duration, and then you're going to have a certain rest interval. But with a speed session, these two get turned up on their uh, upside down almost compared to an interval session. You know, we may be doing those six, seven, eight minute intervals with two minute recoveries, fairly low amplitude differences between work and recovery. Uh, but then with a sprint session, uh, you know, we, we may be talking about periods of work ranging from 15, 20 seconds to max getting up close to a minute. And even there, that's pretty long uh, because then we start to get a lot of, uh, you know, acidification or lactate accumulation and so forth. So uh, 300s, repeat 300s, repeat 200s, maybe even 150s in this range where we're are you're you're working for 20 25 up to 50 seconds those are going to be uh, speed work for an endurance athlete i would say we're not going to do 60s uh, there's probably not a lot of point in that but we're going to do a, a fast enough pace that the athlete is clearly 
extending, using their hip drive, getting up on their, the balls of their feet, uh, and, and, and has a fairly high cadence. Those are the things we've been emphasizing uh, with my daughter. But then what I have to convince her of, after a 300 repeat that maybe she uses 52, 53 seconds to do, is that there's going to be a, free, a pretty significant rest before the next one. Our goal is not to turn a speed session into some kind of an epic interval session where she leaves the track exhausted. That should not be the goal of a speed session. Because with a speed session, what we're trying to do is basically translate some strength work, some power work that we've been doing in order to improve that hip drive. You know, sprinting is about creating horizontal acceleration, which means hip power. That's where it's got to come from. The quads are shock absorbers, but the, the hips are the drivers. So we're in the weight room doing one legged squats, doing some of the specific work that's needed to increase power and strength reserve there. And then we're going to translate it out on the track or uh, wherever you have to work. Uh, and then we're going to do these fairly short work intervals, fairly long rest intervals to keep the recovery rate high at the start of each new interval. Because we're training the nervous system, we're very focused on technique, and we don't want the athlete to break down. We don't want this to become a battle for survival, fighting through a lot of uh, what you would say resistance from the musculature due to uh, fatigue, due to the accumulation of waste products, pH is going down and so forth. So that's not the, the, the goal for this session. It's not an anaerobic capacity session. Uh, it is a session designed to increase speed reserve, to make running at these higher speeds more comfortable, more technically correct, uh, and so forth. So Short work interval, 20 to 50 seconds. Rest interval, 90 seconds, maybe even a minute 45 uh, between repeats. Easy jogs back to the starting line in 300s, for example. So if you do a 300, you go all the way around, then you've got one curve back to the start. You jog that really slow, catch your breath. Do you use heart rate? Nah, heart rate's not really a, a, a tool here other than that it kind of helps you to see if you're recovering just to bringing it down making sure you're ready to to give a full effort now how many of these well that's another issue but maybe depending on where you're starting you might begin with something like four or five times 300 and four four times 200. my daughter did i think uh, 10 times 300 and then some rest and then a block of six times 200. I think that was the toughest speed session she did or the longest. And again, with my daughter, she tends to do more reps than I would recommend. So I just try to convince her of a couple of things. One, long recoveries so that she feels ready to give a good effort and there should be a fairly continuous or constant speed for each of these repeats, even maybe getting a bit faster towards the end. So we have almost kind of a negative splits in the interval session. And then she should leave the track. You should leave the session with something still in the tank. You shouldn't feel like you're totally exhausted. Now, you will... <laughs> You may say, well, this wasn't so bad. And then two days later, you'll be really sore because when you do these speed sessions, the uh, ballistic forces on the musculature are greater than you're used to. And the body will say so often a day or two later. So you need to accept that there's going to be some, uh, you need recovery time. Uh, after these sessions, even though it's not that super hard interval session where you feel like you really went uh, into the cellar, uh, there is a different kind of fatigue that you're generating because you're, you're pushing the envelope on your normal uh, stride pattern, your normal uh, cadence, and there will be consequences in terms of 
um, the stress on the musculotendinous system. So be ready for that. It, it's hard work. You need recovery time, but a combination of some string sessions plus these transitional speed sessions can give you a resource that then you will be able to use as an endurance athlete and convert to, let's call it easier speed at those speeds you're working at uh, in the 10K half, half marathon range. All right, hope that makes sense. That's at least the way we're approaching it. And we're in this period where it makes, uh, it may be a good idea to kind of go back to these basics and fill in some gaps in your physical uh, system, in your physical capacity that will pay off later. So let's make lemonade out of lemons right now and try to strengthen our weaknesses. Thanks.